This is a true story. It's a story about a woman who walked into our gun store and before she left had become somewhat of a celebrity as a room full of customers were hanging on the story she was telling in the words that she left with. But before I tell it, let me put it into some context. Unless you've been hiding in your basement or been completely disconnected to the world around you, you would know that we are currently experiencing unprecedented firearm sales. Demand quickly outpaced supply several months ago and the availability of firearms and ammunition has become a classic example that could be used in any Economics 101 course. As of early January 2020, sales of both were in decline and those in the business of selling guns, ammo, and shooting supplies were slowly settling in for survival economics. The major gun manufacturers were having reduction in forces while at the same time looking for new products that they hoped would help stimulate falling sales. And then, the coronavirus. By the end of February and into March, our area of New Hampshire experienced a mass influx of new or temporary residents from several major Northeast cities like NYC, Boston, Hartford, as well as their surrounds. Folks were moving out of COVID hotspots coming to New Hampshire to live in their summer cottages or family houses. This also caused a nearly instant spike in demand for firearms and ammunition. As of early February, every gun rack in our store was double stacked. There were guns between guns. In the earliest days of COVID, before the social distancing and mask recommendations were clearly understood, I had sent my dad home. The goal was to mitigate his chances for infection. I was working the store alone. One Saturday, early in the pandemic, my wife calls knowing I was working alone and asked if there was anything she could do to help. I simply asked her how soon she could get there. When she arrived, there were between 15 and 25 folks on the showroom floor, a floor that easily maxes out at 10 comfortably. These numbers in the shop would continue for days until I finally limited the showroom to no more than two customers. Lynn had to squeeze through the crowd to get behind the counter. Knowing very little about guns, she asked what she could do. I told her to take the guns that I handed her and get the names and phone numbers of the interested customers and then tell them that we would call them back in the order she took the gun. They would have to return to the store and fill out the paperwork and pay for the firearm. There were so many folks buying guns that day that Lynn ended up trying to help customers on her own. Now, the comedy of this, Lynn, despite her limited knowledge, knew more about firearms than most of the folks who were asking for her help. We were experiencing a surge of first-time buyers. The reason? Shortages of everything from food to toilet paper. People were scared, and they freely admitted it. An interesting aside, most were surprised and some disappointed by the truth that they could not walk out of the store with their guns that day. Both the state and the FBI were running five to ten days behind on background checks. A problem that, to a much lesser degree, exists still today. Most of these new gun buyers were surprised by this contrary reality from what they had been led to believe by the media that it was easier to buy a gun than a loaf of bread. Many never came back. By mid-May, things were starting to calm. Sales, though still strong, were easier to manage. Dad was back down working the shop, wearing a mask, badly, but wearing a mask. From the supply side, we were able to get most of the firearms and ammunition we ordered, but we were beginning to see holes in their availability. And then, the peaceful riots begin. More people moved out of the cities, and gun sales soared for a second time. Today, we, like most stores, have empty shelves and gun racks, and our suppliers tell us there appears to be no relief on the horizon. In the background checks, though some are nearly instant, many can still take as long as five days. And this is where the real story begins. The room was full when she walked in. Hearing aids squealing, you heard her as much as saw her. She walked across the showroom floor with purpose. Erect, no nonsense, a compact woman. She was well dressed, hair more white than gray. She walks up to me and declares with this Eastern European accent, more on that later, that she was there to buy a pistol and a shoot gun. I ask her a few leading questions, like I always do 
trying to understand exactly what her purpose was, and she wasted no time telling me it was for protection from the people. I asked her what people exactly, and she says, haven't you been watching the news on the TV? I say to her, we're pretty rural here. Do you think all of what is occurring on TV will come here? And she answers, now you don't understand these people. We talk more about her needs and her abilities to handle a firearm, and she tells me she has experience. I believe her. She tells me that her farmer neighbor is going to help show her how to work the firearms that she buys. I'm not sure I believe her. She wants the shoot gun for her house and the pistol for her car. I ask her why she wants the handgun for her car. She tells me she's driving to a conference. I tell her to be sure she knows the laws for wherever she's traveling to. She seems unconcerned. We select two firearms, a single barrel break open shotgun. It's easy to open, easy to load, and has a hammer and a trigger. She likes its simplicity. We choose a single action revolver, open the gate, load the ammunition, close the gate, hammer and trigger. She likes that too. I give her two 4473 forms to fill out for her background check. One for the FBI and one for the state. I mean, if one background check is good, then two for the same person must be better, right? You can learn a lot about a person from a 4473. Your whole life can unfold for the dealer. She was born in Poland in 1933, before the war, before Hitler, before the Russians. She is an MD, a physician. With her background check from the FBI cleared and before she pays me for the shotgun, I ask her when she came to this country. She told me 1961. She entered the US on a visitor's visa. She stayed. She told me she spoke little English, but learned very quickly to communicate and to manipulate the bureaucrats in their need to feel powerful. She understood that from her life in Poland. She got her work visa and then her citizenship and got married. She worked as a doctor for a while in a hospital in New York City and then moved to Long Island where she was a doc until the early 80s. It was on Long Island that she learned to shoot, back when you could. She told me she left New York because it got too difficult to live there, too many rules, too much taxes. She came to New Hampshire and worked as a doc until she retired. She told me she wasn't really ready to quit, but when the hospital administration adopted computer-based doctoring, she rejected the idea and told me she believed her job was to doctor her patients and not a computer. Now, back to the beginning of the story and her several references to the people. I tried many times to understand her fear of the people when she finally shared this with me. Following the Second World War, she asked, what gave the world the right to give Poland to the Russians? We didn't get to decide. In the early days, we were under the control of the Bolsheviks, and things never improved until the death of Stalin. The people she was referencing here are the American progressive movements. She said they are behaving just like the Bolsheviks from her country. She holds dual citizenship. She told me and the room that this is not over. The riots, the angry voices, that's just the beginning. By now, the shop is quiet and everyone in the store is listening to her. Pin drops. As she was leaving that first visit, she said this, When they come, the people, I will not go peacefully. She returned to the shop two more times, a second time to fill out the forms, and the final time to pick up her firearms and ammunition. Doc, here is to you. <laughs>